Diabetes and Nutrition, Carbohydrate Counting from the Diabetes Education Program at the Hospital for Sick Children. This video explains carbohydrate counting for diabetes management. Please note, the images in this video are for illustrative purposes only and do not constitute the hospital's endorsement of a specific brand or product. First, what are carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are nutrients found in some foods. They are an important source of energy for the whole body. Carbohydrates convert to sugar, or glucose, in the blood. The body's cells need glucose to work properly. The word carbohydrate is sometimes shortened to carb. What is carbohydrate counting? Carbohydrate counting is an approach to meal planning that considers the total amount of carbohydrates at a meal or snack. It is important to consider all carbohydrates in diabetes meal plans. Even though carbohydrates convert to sugar, these foods do not always taste sweet. Why count carbohydrates? Counting carbohydrates will give your child an enhanced quality of life, allowing increased flexibility when planning meals, better glycemic control, allowing you to plan insulin doses for a variety of meals and activities, and simplified meal planning, allowing you to focus on the nutrient with the greatest impact on blood sugar levels. Before you begin carbohydrate counting, to count carbohydrates, you must have the ability and willingness to do simple math, keep accurate, detailed records, make informed decisions or educated guesses, invest extra time in learning, and use tools such as nutrient analysis information, measuring cups, spoons, and scales. Carbohydrate counting tools. The most useful tools for counting carbohydrates include the nutrition facts table on food packaging, online resources and apps, a kitchen scale, measuring spoons and cups, and the carb counting exchange list. This lists the carbohydrate and serving amounts for many popular foods. These tools should be as accurate as possible and as consistent as possible. Please check with your diabetes team before using specific apps, online resources, or carb counting guides. Now, let's get counting. Food types. Not all foods affect blood sugar levels. Some foods contain carbohydrates and some do not. For carbohydrate counting, it is important to know the difference between carbohydrate foods and non-carbohydrate foods. Carbohydrate foods. The following foods have carbohydrates and will directly raise blood sugar levels. Only eat these foods at scheduled meals and snacks. These foods should be included when taking your mealtime fast-acting insulin. Carbohydrate foods include all grains and starchy foods, such as quinoa, breads and baked goods, crackers, pasta, rice, potatoes, and cereals. Legumes and pulses like kidney beans, lentils, and chickpeas. Sweet vegetables like carrots, peas, and squash. All fruits and berries such as apples, bananas, grapes, strawberries, juiced or dried fruits. Some dairy products like milk, chocolate milk, and yogurt. And treats and sweets such as fries, chips, cookies, and syrup. Non-carbohydrate foods. These foods have low to no carbohydrates, less than three grams per serving, and will not significantly increase blood sugar. You can eat these foods at any time, and they include protein foods such as eggs and meats, like poultry, beef, pork, or fish, and nuts and nut butters, like peanut butter, also cheese and non-animal proteins like tofu, although some non-animal proteins may contain more carbohydrates. Low to no carbohydrate foods also include vegetables such as cucumber, peppers, and broccoli, and fats such as butter, oils, and avocado. Locating carbohydrate information. To count the carbohydrates in these foods, you will need to find the nutrition information for each. Fresh fruits and vegetables often do not have nutrition information on them. Use a carbohydrate counting app or a carbohydrate exchange list to look up each food. Packaged foods usually have a nutrition facts table on the packaging. 
This table will tell you the amount of carbohydrates in each serving. Label reading. There is a lot of information on a nutrition facts table. For accurate carbohydrate counting, you will need to pay attention to more than just the carbohydrate amount. How to read the nutrition facts table to calculate the total number of carbohydrates in a food. First, make a note of the serving size. In this case, it is one bar. Then, look at the total number of grams of carbohydrates. In our example, the total carbohydrates is 17 grams. Then, minus the amount of fiber in grams from the total amount of carbohydrates. In the example, we would subtract the 2 grams of fiber from the 17 grams of carbohydrates to give us 15 grams. Finally, if they are present, you also need to minus the number of grams of sugar alcohols. This will give you the available carbohydrate amount in grams that will affect your blood glucose level. In our example, we have 3 grams of sugar alcohols. So the final calculation is 17 grams of carbohydrates minus 2 grams of fiber minus 3 grams of sugar alcohols. This gives you 12 grams of available carbohydrate that will affect your blood glucose level. When you use the nutrition facts table, you are calculating the amount of carbohydrates for the suggested serving size. The amount you eat may be more or less than this, and you need to adjust the amount of carbohydrates to reflect this. In this example, the nutrition facts table tells us that the suggested serving size of whole grain oat cereal is one cup. The amount of carbohydrates listed on the nutrition facts label is 24 grams. We then need to subtract the three grams of fiber for a total of 21 grams of available carbohydrates per one cup of cereal. In this case, there are no sugar alcohols present. So the suggested serving size of one cup of whole grain oat cereal has a total of 21 grams of carbohydrates. But if you only want to eat half a cup of cereal, you need to divide the amount of carbohydrates in half. This gives you 10.5 grams of carbohydrates. If you want to eat two cups of cereal, you need to double the amount of carbohydrates. This gives you 42 grams of carbohydrates. Also, make sure you don't confuse the weight of the suggested serving size with the grams of carbohydrates. Both are measured in grams. In this example, we are comparing bread versus a bagel with a serving size listed by weight. The serving size for the bread is one slice, which weighs 28 grams. The serving size for the bagel is one whole bagel, which weighs 89 grams. To determine the available carbohydrate for the bread, take the 13 grams of carbohydrate and minus the two grams of fiber. This gives you 11 grams of available carbohydrate per slice of bread but you are going to eat two slices of bread, so you need to multiply by two for a total of 22 grams of available carbohydrates. To determine the available carbohydrate for the bagel, you just need to take the 47 grams of carbohydrates and minus the three grams of fiber. This gives you 44 grams of available carbohydrates. You can see the one bagel has twice the amount of available carbohydrates, 44 grams, when compared to two slices of bread that has 22 grams, Another way to determine the amount of carbohydrates in your food is based on 15 gram portions. You can use the carbohydrate exchange list to determine the amount or portion of different foods that are equal to 15 grams of carbohydrate. For example, a one ounce slice of bread contains 15 grams of carbohydrates. A third of a cup of cooked rice also contains 15 grams of carbohydrates. So does half a cup of cooked lentils or one small apple. You can download a PDF of the carbohydrate exchange list in the description below. Carbohydrate counting apps focus on diet and provide a variety of nutrition information, but may not be specific to just carbohydrate counting. They often contain a database of thousands of foods, including fast food chains and restaurants. Some apps and websites allow you to look up nutrition information and even log or track your carbohydrate intake throughout the day. You will find tools that allow users to adjust serving size. These tools do not always give you the available or net carbohydrates and you may need to minus the grams of fiber from the total grams of carbohydrates. Please check with your diabetes team before using specific apps, online resources, or carb counting guides to make sure it is reliable and accurate. Counting meal and snack totals. 
Once you know the carbohydrate amount of each food on your plate, you can add them together to get the total carbohydrate count for that meal. For example, for breakfast, your child might have two slices of bread with one tablespoon of peanut butter and a cup of milk. This would add up to a total of 42 grams of carbohydrates. For their morning snack, they could have a small apple. This would be about 15 grams of carbohydrates. For lunch, if your child has a cup of pasta with a chicken breast and half a cup of broccoli, they would be getting 30 grams of carbohydrates. For their afternoon snack, they might eat a banana and a couple of pieces of cheese for another 30 grams of carbohydrates. If, for supper, your child has two slices of pizza, a cup of milk, and then a cup of blueberries, this would add up to 87 grams of carbohydrates. And for the evening snack, three quarters of a cup of yogurt and 10 grapes would be 25 grams of carbohydrates. When you plan meals and snacks, be aware of the total carbohydrate amounts. These will affect your child's blood sugar levels the most. A healthy diet should balance appropriate amounts of protein, fats, and carbohydrates, all of which play an important role in healthy growth and development. The Canada Food Guide and the Diabetes Canada Plate Method recommend that half of your plate is vegetables and fruits, a quarter of it is whole grain foods, and a quarter is protein. Counting on. Counting carbohydrates may seem time consuming at first, Eventually, you will be familiar with the carbohydrate amounts in your child's diet. With practice, carbohydrate counting can become an important skill in managing your child's diabetes and keeping a healthy, balanced diet. We are here to help. If you have questions or need further tips, please contact your diabetes team.